Welcome to lesson 4, which is all about installing Joomla. This is the trickiest part of setting up Joomla, so once you get through this, you're well on your way. This lesson is broken into several parts, but you don't need to watch each part as I'll explain later. To start using Joomla, you need to copy all the Joomla files onto your hosting account. In this lesson, I'll explain this process, which involves downloading the compressed Joomla file, expanding this file on your local computer, uploading the complete Joomla files to your hosting account. Before we begin, you might like to start a document containing all the passwords you'll be using throughout this process. I include a space for this information in the workbook supplied with the upgrade version of this course. The first information you should note is the upload instructions from your web host. Hosts usually provide this information in a welcome email. The details you need are the FTP server name where you upload your files, your FTP username, your FTP password and the location to store your files. If you're following along with the workbook that's provided in the upgrade of this course, you'll find a section at the beginning where you can enter your details. Print the first page and enter these details under the heading Hosting Access Details. The FTP server name is often ftp.yourdomainname.com, but again, check with your host. Enter the FTP username here and the FTP password. The last one isn't so obvious. Your host welcome email might include a location on your hosting account where you store your web files. For example, I use a control panel called cPanel and the files are stored in a folder called public HTML. Plesk, another popular control panel, stores files inside http underscore docs. So, if your host has told you to upload your files to a particular location, note that here. All the Joomla files you need are available in a single compressed file. Get this by opening your browser and going to www.joomla.org. Look for the button that directs you to the latest download. In most cases, you'll save the zip version here. But if you need a different version, such as TAR format, then you'll find this here. Note that Joomla is being updated all the time and the version number, in this case 1.5.14, is likely to have changed. That's okay, newer versions are unlikely to affect this training. Now, download this file in the same way as you would any other file. In my case, I will right click and choose Save Link As. Then I'll select a folder that I've created on my computer called Joomla and save it there. Now wait for the download to complete which could take a while as it's a large file. And that's the first step done. Next we have to extract the files. If you have a zip program already installed as I explained in the previous lesson all you need to do is select the file you just downloaded. I'm using Windows so I open the folder where I save the download and double click the file name. This opens a new window with the option to extract all files. If you installed WinZip or StuffIt you'll see that program interface instead and you'll see an equivalent option somewhere to extract the files. Click the button to extract the files and choose a location where the files should go. In my case, I'll choose the default location it's provided. Click Extract and wait for this process to complete, which will take a while. I'll pause the video at this point until my computer has finished. Go to the folder where the files have been extracted and have a look at the result. There are several folders and files that have been extracted. But don't go looking for something to run. All we're doing is preparing the files to be uploaded to your hosting account. We're not trying to get Joomla running on your local computer. Now we have to transfer all your Joomla files to your website hosting account. You need to make a decision where these files should live. If you have a brand new hosting account, then you'll place these in your main hosting directory. If however you already have files on your hosting account, 
You probably don't want to disturb them just yet, so it makes sense to create a new folder and upload the files there. You can then build your site and move it to the root folder later. Once you know where to put your files, it's time to upload them using your FTP program. I'll show you how to do this using FileZilla that we set up in Lesson 3, but the process is similar in all FTP software. Run your FTP software and have a look at the interface. The files on your local computer are listed on the left. The files on your web server will be listed on the right once we make a connection. So, in the left column, navigate to the folder where you previously extracted the Joomla files. In my case, that was drive C, Joomla, and this folder. You can see the files in the window underneath. Now let's connect to your web server. You need to enter the connection details provided by your web host. So I'll enter the host name here, which in my case is ftp.joomlavideodemo.com. Then your FTP username. Mine is Joomla VI and your FTP password. Unless your host has told you otherwise, you can leave the port one empty. Then click the connect button and you'll see your website files listed at the right. And this is where you need to know where to store your hosting files. In my case, the files need to be stored in the public HTML folder. So I'll double click on public underscore HTML to move to that folder. Now as this is a new site, I'm just going to upload everything to this location. However, if I wanted to create my Joomla site somewhere else, I could create a new folder here. I'd right click, choose create directory, give it a name like Joomla, and click OK. Then you double click on this new folder so it was ready to accept the Joomla files. In my case though, I'm not going to do that so I will delete that directory. Now we're ready to transfer. We want to copy all of your local Joomla files to your website. Simply select everything here in the left and then right click and choose upload. This will upload all the files to the folder on the right. This will take a while as there's many files to be uploaded so I'll pause the video. All the required files are now on your website and this completes the first part of the installation. The second step is to create a database on your hosting account which I'll show you in the next video. Up until now you've probably been able to follow along quite easily but this lesson introduced much more detail that might be hard to remember. The workbook I've been mentioning is available when you upgrade your membership. Each lesson is summarised and includes screenshots to help you easily remember each step. You'll find a link below with more information about what's included in the upgrade.